I'm Dr. Mandler and we're going to talk briefly about chapter two of A Voyage to Kazoinia. In chapter two, uh, Gulliver finds himself in a completely different society from what he's used to. It's a society that is not based or organized around what Karl Marx co calls the cash nexus. It's a society in which class differences do not exist, in which money and currency does not exist. There is no exchange of money for goods. It's a society where uh, each member of, of the Hin society knows exactly what's needed uh, and what, what's needed in terms of what they themselves need and what other Hins need. This is so different from what uh, we are used to as human beings in all societies that Gulliver is at a complete loss as to uh, figuring out what's organizing a society like this. There are a number of episodes from which this becomes very clear. The first one is in the garden, and the second one is in the clothing store. The third one is at the restaurant. The events are very, very uh, clear and self-explanatory, yet for Gulliver, it takes a longer time to catch on to what's going on than the reader. Uh, the marks of civility that Gulliver uh, really consciously follows uh, and conscientiously uh, fo follows, such as bowing down, such as removing his hat in, in deference to people of a higher class or whom he thinks are in a higher class. These are all signs that we, we know very clearly um, are necessary in a class-based society. Uh, he's very, very grateful for the help that he receives, even though there is no need to be grateful in a society where everybody does what everybody needs to do for the betterment of society. But he doesn't catch on to this. Uh, he doesn't find this society very appetizing. In fact, quite the opposite. And the reader may, may share in his disdain for a society where individualism seems to uh, have ceased to exist. There are no individual differences in clothing. They're all wearing the same extremely comfortable uniforms that are exactly suited for the weather and the climb. Uh, they eat as much as they require at a restaurant, but they don't have to say thank you or they don't even ask for anything. There is no super structure of politeness. And that is because there is no substructure of monetary needs. Uh, this is a society that Gulliver finds very forbidding, very uh, comfortable, but ironically inhospitable because there is no outward outpouring of emotions that he's very used to. And we as human beings seem to uh, ha have developed to cope with the inequalities that exist by nature in our society. Uh, so that's the second chapter where he's trying to see what the society he lives in um, is organized as. And as we move into chapter three, we're going to see uh, the, the main organizing factors of Hin society. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mandler.